Hello and welcome back. I am Conan Liberian with Conan's EDC, Easy Dad Carry. And today I am on my way to the Dollar Tree for a survival tin challenge. Let's take a look. So I am a huge fan of survival tins and survival kits, things like that. And I've seen a lot lately where people are saying that tins are not a viable survival option or help. And I agree, a survival tin is not a pack, it's not a kit. What it is is supplies and essentials and basics to help you get by until you can in fact establish yourself more or at least set yourself up better in a bad situation. So uh, I wanted to do this for a couple reasons. Two, one, it's been a while since I made a tin and I love making tins. And two, I'm doing the Dollar Tree because, well, I have a lot of this gear already. I have kits, I have tins, I have other things, and I really don't need to spend a ton of money on things I already have. But I just wanna show that you don't have to spend a ton of money to get the basics together to be able to get by. So. Uh, there are a few things that I'm after. Uh, I made a list here. Let's go over that real quick. All right, so a list. We're going to start off really with basics. We want fire, which shouldn't be too hard. Uh, probably matches lighter, whatever. But fire is usually pretty easy. I want to find some sort of blade. I feel like that's going to be kind of trickier, but we'll see what I can dig up. A light of some sort, independent of fire, a flashlight, some sort of torch. Uh, some way to signal, and that just might be a good flashlight, I don't know, but just some way to signal in case you need help or you're trying to flag someone down. This, I feel like, is going to be probably the trickiest. Food or energy. Um, yeah, that might be a little bit tricky. Uh, water, obviously... You can't really carry water in a tin, but some way to either treat or handle or contain water. First aid. Pretty self-explanatory. Probably not going to be able to carry a tourniquet, but something to keep things, nicks, cuts, stuff clean. Uh, and then another tough one, shelter. Not going to be able to fit a tent in a tin, but some sort of something maybe. So that's kind of what I'm going to be looking for. All right, so once I've got those things and maybe some extras, not sure, I'm gonna kind of see what I find as I walk around. We'll put the kit together, uh, kind of have some conversation around some of the reasoning and uh, go from there. So I'm pretty excited. Let's see what we find here at the Dollar Tree. All right, basic Dollar Tree, here we come. A lot of Easter stuff, I don't know how well that's gonna work out. So, they don't have any trick candles, but these can definitely help do the trick. Something like this would be good. Yeah. So, the craft aisle always has something that might be useful. This can definitely help do the trick. Also, apparently, the Dollar Tree does Dollar Plus. I think they're a bunch of sellouts. Food is going to be tough to figure out in a tin, but I think we'll make something work. Something like this is always a good option. Something pre-made with a few different bandages. Plus then, if you want to, you got a hard case for it already. And actually, there we go. That's a great find. Now I'm not gonna buy medicine here. I've already got it at home, but it is a decent option if you just need something basic. This should have plenty of what I'm looking for. Okay. 
boot is going to be tough to figure out in a tin, but I think we'll make something work. Something like this is always a good option, something pre-made with a few different bandages. Plus then, if you want to, you got a hard case for it already. And actually, there we go, that's a great find. Now I'm not going to buy medicine here, I've already got it at home, but it is a decent option if you just need something basic. This should have plenty of what I'm looking for. All right found everything I needed and wanted and more so let's get back to the work desk and see what we got all right so I've got my list and I've got my big old bag of stuff I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of pick it out piece by piece check it off the list as I go um, yeah, go from there. Now, what I will say, starting right up, and you probably saw it in the video, I actually found some tins while I was there. The tin itself, because I was originally planning on the Altoids tin, and as I put this together, I may end up still going with that. The thing is, this tin, uh, so it's called a prayer tin. It's got a little prayer on the inside. Why I really like this, though, why I bought it, is it actually comes, and uh, I actually have purchased these before, specifically for this reason, comes with little pads of paper and a little mechanical pencil. Something I didn't really think about in the past, though, is the tin itself. And actually, this tin is a little bit bigger than an Altoids tin. It's a little bit taller, it's hard to tell. Now, here's the thing. In the past, um, and with the tins I have, I like when they're pretty basic because that way you can actually boil water in them. But in this one, I would probably not boil water. It's painted on the inside. So I would have reservations about using this as an actual uh, carrying, or rather as an actual, uh, I guess, mini firing pit or boiling tin. Plus it's got the hinges halfway down. So I don't know about boiling water in the tin itself, but because this was a you know Dollar Tree theme, I thought I'd give it a try just sticking with an actual supply I found at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go with one of these tins. I'm going to go with... This one feels like it closes a little bit better. This guy here. So I don't have tin on here, but... Uh, I do like the idea of having a pencil or something to write with is nice. I could not find a little mini pen, which I kind of thought I might want to try, and I couldn't find anything like that. But the fact that I've got both the tin and a pencil in here and actually a little bit of paper, which I always like to have. I talk about carrying paper in pretty much all my kits or my bags to have something to write on, whether it's to leave information for someone Write something for yourself so you can take notes or even use as some kindling. A little bit of papers, not a bad thing. So I'm going to start right off with pencil, paper, and a tin, which I think is not a bad way to start. Up next is the blade. So the Dollar Tree has some stuff, but I really couldn't find anything this time around that I really liked. But I will say, as far as a blade goes, I mean, I have knives, I carry knives, I have uh, multi-tools with me that have great blades on them, but something like this is at least a good way to have a couple different options for a blade. Ironically, that's why I have this. 
Sometimes you need a blade just to cut stuff out, including blades. So I want to be careful. There we go. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to fit the whole handle in here. However, I do have an option. Let me grab this. All right. So, electrical tape. And I definitely I love having electrical tape or just tape in general in my kits. It's useful for a lot of reasons, especially for something like this. Because... This is going to do several things for me. But number one, when it comes to the blades themselves, because I don't want them just rattling around loose in here, what I'd like to do is I can take one of these blades. I think I'd probably want to stick with something like this. So this guy has a nice long edge to him. And I can secure it right up top where I can get to it nice and easy. And it's not going to rattle around and possibly hurt me while I'm using this kit. Now, the actual thing itself, what I really wonder, first off, if I can get it out. So, it looks like... You would just wedge this in, and let me give one of these a try. Now, this one feels kind of cheap. I don't know how uh, how hardcore this thing is, but it at least is a way to hold it. And what I'm really wondering, I'm going to take this blade out. I twisted it, and it feels like it, in fact, wants to lock. So if I take this blade out though, or let's see here. So that's the mechanism. If you look in here, it has, okay. So that pushes way out. So as you tighten this, it climbs up that. And so you know what I think I'm gonna do? First off, I'm gonna handle this a little more carefully and yeah, this is just kind of some cheap aluminum here, but I have an idea. All right, so a little bit of movie magic, but just a good pair of snips, I was able to shorten this. I want to do something about that end, though. It's got a little bit of an edge on it. This is another reason I love electrical tape. It's just good for kind of coating stuff, just making stuff easier to handle. There we go. And look at that. That's not pretty by any means. However, I now actually have a handle. I have a tool for handling these blades. So whether, and you see it a lot, and I may... If I had thought to grab it, and I honestly didn't think to grab it because I have so many of them, is an actual, even box cutter blade. But, I now have a tool to use and articulate with these small blades. And it's not super heavy duty. But it is something that will actually fit in here, and it's a way that I don't have to handle the blade itself, just direct skin on skin on metal that gives me a uh, just a way to articulate. So I'm going to tape a few of these blades up in the top. All right, and we have our blade solution. Let's see what we've got next here. All right, so I actually apparently picked this up too. So I actually I filmed the first part of my day going to Dollar Tree a little while ago. So I did not remember everything I actually picked up. So I guess I have two solutions to Blade. That being said, obviously this thing 
is not going to fit inside of this. So let me play with this some and see what I can figure out. Okay, so what I figured out is actually these are breakable blades, if you can see the seam. So I can, in fact, carry an extra, well, not an extra, but another type of blade. There we go. I'm going to do this and just fold it so that way I have a tail on it. It stays safe while it seats down in there. Probably face it away so that way I have, like I said, I have another edge in here. So that actually works out. And well, I've got another cheap box cutter for the house. Let's see what else we've got. Okay. Well, first I'm going to do double dash. We got blades covered. Uh, fire, a couple different options. So I usually prefer something like a trick candle in one of these kits. One of those candles that will relight itself is actually just very convenient in windy situations. Barring that, having just candles themselves, wax is good for storing, a candle lasts longer than a match, you can actually create heat out of just a simple little candle, too. So, a couple little candles are good for, well, fire starting or making. I'm going to throw a few in here. I'm going to keep them red, because red is easy to see in case you drop something. There we go. And red wax, too, is a good marker for things. So, I'm going to say that's good for fire, but I know I've got more than that okay this is another one of my favorite kind of multiple use supply items that is in well it's in for me it goes in fire kits it goes in first aid and it goes in just general multi-purpose use is super glue super glue makes a great fire starter uh, super glue is great for first aid. I use it probably more often than band-aids for first aid. Uh, and it's just good for general repair. So I'm going to throw actually a couple tubes of super glue in here, both as fire starting and first aid. And these are really single use, these tiny ones. I thought about getting a larger one, and that may have been smarter as far as for the the space I guess but I also like this single use one simply because it's you're not fussing around you don't have to figure out if you're gonna ask what am I trying to say if you use it you use it you don't have to worry about putting the cap back on you don't have to worry about finding this or that so a couple super glues definitely are good I'm gonna give a little bit of a well I guess you can't do a little bit of a check mark but I'm going to do for both fire and one for medicine or first aid just because super glue really is a fantastic first aid item that I think is underutilized. Okay, what is next? You know what? We're going to continue with the fire theme. So this is just a regular bunch of regular matches. These aren't strike anywhere. They're just regular matches. But the reason I like this is, one, it's what they had at the Dollar Tree. But two, the box itself can be useful. If I wanted to just throw this whole box in here, that would be easy enough to do. Uh, I don't, though. What I liked about these is that they have a striker on both sides. So I'm actually going to steal the striker off both sides of this. Maybe. There we go. Alright. Striker off both sides. Or if I was really feeling anxious about it, I wanted to throw this whole book in, I could steal it off multiple ones and just keep filling this tin up with striker pads. 
Now, these are not strike anywhere. These are not waterproof. They're not stormproof or windproof, but there is something that you can do that's pretty easy to fix that. So first off, I'm going to bring out uh, another easy supply that actually I should have put in the bottom of this. I may actually keep it in top. This is just aluminum foil. This is also something you can buy at the Dollar Tree. I happen to already have a ton of it because I use it for cooking all the time. But I'm going to use it because this candle I've got here, this is another supply, again, you can get at the Dollar Tree. I didn't pick it up because I didn't know how well it would fit in here, and I don't necessarily want to carry this when I've got these. But I am going to use this candle to waterproof these matches. All right. So a little bit of uh, TV magic here. We're going to let this go for a minute. Oop. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, tell you what, I realize instead of just waiting for that to burn down, uh, another fire source, a lighter. Don't go anywhere outdoors without a lighter. Uh, I actually really like my Zippo. That's what I carry uh, when I'm outdoors. But I also realized, even though I meant to grab it, and I know it's in my video, I forgot to actually pick up a pack, but this is actually a Dollar Tree lighter, so that absolutely is going to sit in there too. So while this is cooking down the candle here, I am going to say fire is well covered here with the matches I'm going to throw in, what I'm doing here, and this lighter. So one more minute and I'll show you what the candle is really for. Okay, so I think this has gone long enough, and we've got to do it quick, but the point of that is this wax in here pretty easily becomes a waterproofing coating for your matches. There we go. I didn't want to do it while it was lit, and it's better when it's, you know, actually more burned down and way more liquidy. However, you can see the wax coating on the tip now is going to keep these dry. And it's still pretty easy once you strike these against your strip that it's just going to go through the wax. So again, ideally, you'd melt this down a little more, coat more of the stick itself but that's just a basic easy way that we now have waterproof matches out of just basic matches. So we'll throw a few more in there just because you never know. Maybe you drop your lighter. Maybe you need to toss fire light one and toss it into something. Matches are always good to have, even if you already have a full lighter itself. So we're going to throw a few matches in here. Like I said, we're really going to count fire as being done. All right, let's get this cleared up because I have an idea on the next little side project that I want to do for this. All right, so light was kind of a tough one. Not a lot is going to fit in this, but I came up with two solutions that would work because this is both light as well as signaling. I like the idea. Now this is basic. This thing isn't going to last very long, but we also have a laser pointer on it and this light. The problem I've got is this is pretty bulky to go in here. So I also have one of these, which I am a huge fan of these cheesy little pen lights. I use them at work all the time. It's actually one of my favorite work EDCs. It's a pen, it's a stylus, it is a laser pointer, it is a little flashlight. But, obviously this whole thing isn't going to fit in there. So I'm going to see if I can maybe pop this apart and steal just the top because this also has a little clip. So worst case, 
you might be able to even put this on say the brim of a hat if you can figure out securing the button for a light so i'm going to see if i can take that off i thought it'd be some long process but actually that comes off super easy i mean that's crazy easy and that plops right down in there now again this isn't going to last forever it's i'm sure just a few little button batteries however it's a way to try to get someone's attention from far away even as well and just have a little bit of light again nothing crazy and you can absolutely spend very good money on something that does way more than this but for a buck it fits and it fills uh two purposes so we've got light and signaling you know what too i just realized i think i want to yeah i want to steal this out of there the pencil is nice but the pencil is actually really bulky however this pen barely takes up any room and still writes. so that works out great and worst case i have another laser pointer for the cat all right, so this is kind of a fun one. I was looking for maybe a tiny glow stick. I don't know how well this will work out. What I found were these glow balls. And I picked it up and sounded like it was loose in there. So if I'm not mistaken, now this whole ball obviously is not going to fit. Now that's a neat little thing. I bet what you're supposed to do is just shake this around. Let me read the instructions, make sure I'm not going to hurt myself doing this. All right, so my plan was originally, I thought maybe it was like a glow stick inside that you snapped and stuck in here. But reading the instructions, if you can see that, it looks like these two little vials in here break and then mix. So if this were something I could pull apart, I would do that. But um, yeah, I'm not going to mess with chemicals in this thing. I think this will just become uh, a toy around the house. All right, I'm going to get through this next bit pretty quick because it's pretty basic. First aid. I like these little first aid kits, um, especially because they already have their own little hard case. So if you wanted to, you could just kind of bulk this up and carry this separate. But I like these kits too because it has things... It's got various types of bandages that you can steal out of it. So I'm just going to steal a few med supplies. All right, so a few med supplies and actually one last thing. So I like to use these little med bags. You can find them. Uh, I haven't seen them at Dollar Tree before, but I usually get them, say, at Walmart. They're just little pill baggies. Uh, you can also, and I see it a lot, you can just wrap pills in tinfoil or saran wrap or just some sort of something. But having, you know, this isn't going to be crazy. This is a few Advil. Uh, most of my kits also have like heartburn and uh, stuff to take care of, you know, gut issues. But having a few meds with you is, it can absolutely turn a really horrible situation into something a little more bearable. So I implore, I'm going to take a second here, not just about the pills, but first aid, never rely on a tin like this to take care of an actual full emergency. Make sure whatever you're doing, if you're hiking, if you're camping, you're in your car, have a decent med kit or access to something because accidents happen. They can be quick. They can be serious. Don't rely on a dollar store first aid kit to try to save your life this is cuts nicks boo-boos just things that are making you uncomfortable make sure to have access or have a plan in case of an actual medical emergency if this were say a real emergency prep kit and i have medication that i relied on taking uh, for my actual well-being i would have a few of those pills in here as well just make sure if you're going to carry medicine or first aid that it's both something worth carrying and something that uh, can actually help you. And if it's what you need is more than this, then figure out a way to have access to that in general. Okay, so we're going to call that 
the first aid here. I think that's not terrible. Actually, no, I lied. There is one last thing. I found this. Liquid skin has become one of my favorite things. I know I said I use super glue a lot, but liquid skin has also become uh, something I love using in my med kits. It's just liquid bandage. It's easier than uh, super glue as far as dealing with stuff. Uh, yeah, liquid skin, finding this little tube. I was super happy. I actually picked up a couple to go in my other med kits as well. All right, so you saw me pick up these as well. These are, if I can get them out without hurting myself, jumbo paper clips. And a little bit of metal isn't a bad thing to have because these can be used for a lot of things. Paper clips can also be used for fish hooks. Uh, take it one end of it and really grind it against a stone you can actually hook into that you can twist them to make you know really gnarly fish hooks three of them together to really get something bigger if that's what you're trying to catch uh, but paper clips and a kind of a chunk of metal like this definitely can help in you know fishing is hard to do when you are set up with everything fishing in an extreme survival circumstance is crazy but having some paper clips even if you're just trying to attach things to other things Paper clips are pretty great for that as well. I'm a big fan of paper clips in... There we go. In most of my clips, or kits rather. Now, along the lines of attaching stuff to stuff, it kind of falls into shelter a little bit. Zip ties are always great to have. They are, of course, more permanent and more secure in a... They're not going to come apart like paper clips. Uh, they're good for a lot of things. I actually really like uh, zip ties in all my hats, too. If you wear a cap at all, put a few of these in the brim of your hat. So I'm going to put a couple of these in just because they're also a good kind of, I guess, permanent way to attach a thing to another thing. You don't have to worry about it coming undone. So it does also mean, though, if you're going to use a zip tie... Make sure you really want to secure whatever you are securing. So we're going to do the zip ties. And then again, securing things to things. The, uh, the electrical tape and the duct tape that I found. Uh, this is new. I haven't seen them carry this heavy duty stuff. I am going to be using this in the kit here as well. Using my favorite trick with one of these. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so what I've got now is actually a few feet of both electrical tape and heavy duty duct tape. I just put it on the old, uh, that was a UDF card, but any sort of old credit card style type. Oh no, it may be a little long. These will probably have to lay flat, but if you cut it a little thinner, actually these will fit down in the edges okay once I actually get it in there. Because at the end, I'm going to pull all this out and then rearrange the tin. So, a little bit of duct tape, a little bit of electrical tape, and some of these zip ties. We can actually mark off shelter. You are not going to build a shelter out of these. But these items can absolutely help secure, say, around a branch or secure something together to help you build at least a little bit of maybe a lean-to or something. Worst case scenario, they can help secure items for you. So I'm going to say that's about as sheltery as it might get. Let me see what else I've got here. All right, coming down to the end, a sewing kit. And I love these sewing kits for a lot of reasons. One, it has a lot of supplies in it that are useful. Two, if you really wanted to, you could even make a case. You can make a kit out of this thing. This is pretty big, actually. But I've showed off this exact kit before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it. I'm going I'm to pull out the supplies I want from this thing. All right. So what I've got here is essentially a little mini sewing kit. Uh, one thing I will always say, and I've said it before. So I've got a few pins. I've got a few needles. I've got a threader because I can't thread a needle to save my life. But you'll notice I actually already have threads started on this needle. And I'm just going to fold this 
over nice and easy. Don't really want any overlap. There we go. So what I've got now is this little pre-threaded needle as well because like I said, I can't I can't thread a needle to save my life when it's not an emergency. I do not trust myself to be able to thread one when it is actually an emergency. So having something pre-threaded can be is something everyone should do. If you are going to carry a sewing kit at all, or if you're going to carry needle and thread, whether you're going to do it for emergency, uh, say worst case scenario, medical, or emergency whatever, especially if you're cold or you're injured and you know, you're trying to sew up something really bad, you don't want to have to be screwing around with it. So this, I've got needles, I've got pins, I've got a pre-threaded here in this red thread, so that way I can actually, it's got high visibility, I can see. And then, uh, I'm going to steal from this kit some safety pins. I probably could have found bigger ones, and that's something I'm regretting here, that I didn't look for bigger ones, but... You know, again, I was just kind of looking to see what there was. And I think I'm going to spend some time winding this around so I can actually carry thread. Although it might not be a bad idea just to throw this in here if it can fit. I'll see how it looks at the end. Okay. Q-tips. Pretty easy. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these ones are just plastic. I kind of wish I had grabbed the red ones because they... Again, it was an emergency and I was trying to leave a trace or be found. The red ones actually would have been better for that. They would have stuck out more. But these are good for, well, a lot of things. Let me see here. These are good, obviously, for medical purposes. These are good for kindling with the cotton on the end. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to cut a couple of these real small. And these can just be little bits of kindling that go in here. Now, obviously, whoops. These aren't necessarily going to be sterile unless I was handling them to be sterile. Maybe throw them in with the meds themselves. But in this case, it's just so that I have something, say, to clean or swab or something. There we go. So, yeah, Q-tips are useful for a lot of things. I feel like I probably don't have to go over everything that they're useful for. I will say, too, if you dip these or cover these in wax, you make fireproof, or rather you make waterproof fire starters as well. So it's another good use of just wax itself. Again, if you've got these candles in here, save the wax where you can because you could reuse it. All right, so I think I've got one last thing. I know this is a long one. I haven't done a long one like this in a while. But food slash... Oh, I guess I didn't have it on that list. I was just thinking about it. Um, well, the water, I'll cross that off real quick. Like I said, in a traditional Altoids tin, you can boil it in the bottom of this, and you have a little higher wall. Uh, in this case, I would say the tin foil becomes a reservoir. What I would say is find something. You could even put it in this as the liner itself, although I don't know that I want to be around if fire is cooking this tin with the fumes. Maybe spend some time burning that crap off. Um, but some sort of reservoir to put this in so you can actually boil water in this. Now, they don't have water purification tablets, something you could do is a little bit of bleach, a dollar bottle of bleach, a couple drops in a large container of water can help distill that. Now look that up, I'm not going to go over the exact process, um, but it is actually a viable solution if you have uh, actual pure bleach to do that as well. But this becomes a good reservoir for boiling water too. But food and energy, here it is. So... Not a whole lot of options, 
I did find these, and I don't know if anyone remembers NECA wafers, but these guys, I mean, it's just straight sugar, and sometimes, honestly, a little bit of sugar is what you need. A little bit of... Oh, wow. I don't think I've had these since I was a kid, but I like the idea of these NECA wafers, honestly, because they're so thin and can pack in here pretty easily. I also like the idea of Starburst because, one, I like Starbursts, and two, if you cut off a little piece of this, I'm willing to bet, here, watch this, a little bit of a jump cut there, but this becomes a little bit of bait. Maybe you've got some line, you could use the thread, I, you know, I don't really have a good option in here for fishing line, that would be something, you know, Maybe we could figure out, maybe next time at, I'm at the dollar store, I'll do a quick update. But, actually, you know what? I do have a solution for that. Paracord. Now, I don't know that this is actually 550 paracord. Uh, I'm really kind of, it seems dubious to me. However, this can easily be used to hook through here. And I'll bet, give me a minute, I'm going to come up with something that can go in this tin. Alright, big old jump cut, because it's been a minute, and I've been working on this, is actually a duct tape pocket for the kit. Not just a little pocket, but this means we have a lot of extra, well, duct tape, which is good for a lot of things. I also added little pocket on the outside so we can add well a lot of things for example all right so this is it's a few feet and it's kind of an ugly braid but i just want to get something together can slide right into the outside pocket here along with well i guess whatever else you really want to jam into this so this video has run a crazy length here but uh, what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> well, I'm going to get it all packed in and then actually do some final, final thoughts. All right, so this is it, our Dollar Tree Survival Tin. Proof of concept here. And if you really watched through all of this, I applaud you if you skipped to the end to get here. I understand, but the duct tape sheath with the zip ties on the outside for easy access, the pocket here with a few feet of paracord, you could make more pockets on the outside if you wanted to. You could even rig this with some sort of clip if you wanted to just somehow attach it to you. Tin foil for boiling water, whatever you need to do with that. And then just to show that it is, in fact, all in here, the <laughs> final work. So, I love these tins. I love them because they're fun, they're interesting, they get you thinking, and they get you thinking outside of the box. Because, again, the point of this was that you don't need to spend a million dollars to get something that can actually help you. But... On the other hand, you shouldn't rely on just something like this. I've said it before, and I'll say it over and over. Tools are only as useful as the knowledge you have to use them. So if you were to say you went out and I gave you a shopping list, you got every piece in here, but you didn't know how to use paracord, as silly as that sounds, there is a trick to using paracord in the inner strands. If you didn't know how to properly start and build a small fire or use a candle to actually provide warmth even this by itself in just this tin the point of all of this is not because oh this is cool even though it is the point is that you can get by with a lot of things around you in your world and there's no reason that you shouldn't have fun doing it this is Honestly, the Altoids thing is kind of my first EDC love. It was my first video, if you go back and watch, was the EDC, EDC Altoids tin 
I put together and was carrying, and I still carry a variation, an updated version of that. I just hope that, um, <laughs> I hope this was fun. I hope it was interesting. I hope to hear maybe someone goes out and says, you know what, why not give it a try? And here's the thing, with the money I spent, honestly, it was probably about 20 bucks, maybe a little over 20 bucks. I can make several more of these kits and hand them out. I got more, if I have it here, I have it somewhere, but I had another one of these tins, and all of this stuff is easy to source. So, yeah, go out, do something fun, do something different, put together a tin, play with some duct tape and zip ties and birthday candles or whatever you're going to do, and just have fun. And thank you if you really did get through all of this, or even just skipping around. I always appreciate the interaction and the time that you spend with me. So, as always, stay safe, be prepared, and have a great day.